Microbats have a bit of an image problem. But they're a crucial player in ecosystems and they're insect terminators. If you had bats in your backyard, you'd probably find out that you have got less of a problem with flies, moths, mosquitoes at night time than anybody who hasn't got a microbat. But microbat numbers are declining, with habitat loss their biggest threat. There has been so, a lot of deforestation around here. Microbats can live in a lot of places, but they like to be in perhaps underneath a piece of bark, or they like to be in sheltered places away from the wind. If we take away, as we have done a lot of their habitat, they've got very few places to go. We also wanted to create a space where there were numerous microbats so that we can start experimenting with an integrated pest management plan about how well the microbats deal with insect uh, populations. So we, we are intending to put lots of microbat boxes together and see what happens to the mosquitoes and the other insects. We've probably got about 20 different species around here. And of course we've got the major bats at Mount Etna and the caves, which are so close by. But probably everyone who's got a backyard has got a micro bat in it. And how important are they? Absolutely vital, because they're the night pollinators. They're, they're not specifically pollinators, they're incidental pollinators. They are insectivores. So if you had bats in your backyard, you'd probably find out that you have got less of a problem with flies, moths, mosquitoes at night time than anybody who hasn't got a micro bat. But for many micro bat species, protecting caves is crucial to their survival. Most micro, uh, small insectivorous bats will roost in uh, hollow trees and, and vegetation, so habitat loss is important there. But some of them, particularly the ones around Rockhampton, uh, roost in caves and they have these very important maternity caves where females from thousands of kilometres around will come in once a year and they go to a particular cave to rear, to have and to rear their offspring. So you can imagine those caves are particularly important for uh, sustaining those species. And unfortunately, the ghost bat had a, one of those caves at Rockhampton and in the 90s that cave was destroyed. So that has had a negative impact on the uh, population of, those of that species. But it could be too late for the ghost bat. Its numbers have declined by 80% since the 1990s when mining destroyed a number of caves at Mount Etna in central Queensland. Researchers recently surveyed nearby caves using thermal imaging and audio recordings. Well, it was a program from Central Queensland University training environmental science students and science students how to, to get an understanding of what species are out there. So we were using remote and direct sensing techniques to survey the bats, both by going into caves and using uh, thermal imaging cameras and by using uh, ultrasound bat recorders to record the echolocation calls of the species and then to try to identify them. In particular, we were hoping to find evidence of the ghost bat which has a maternity cave down there. Unfortunately, we didn't record any calls of the ghost bats. It's a great concern because the, these bats could have been using these caves for 100,000 years. And um, in fact, they, we, they have been using them for that long. And so it's really important. And when you think that bats come from 1,000 kilometers away to use that cave, uh, it's a very important resource. You might, and so when that cave disappears, that really has an impact. It'd be like taking away the maternity awards at the hospital and expecting nothing's gonna happen. It's gonna have a big impact. So we have five different species of microbats living inside um, Capricorn Caves. Now, Capricorn Caves is just one cave system in this area. So the bats can move from this cave to the other caves around here. Uh, we have quite a few little benchwing bats that will hang around here as well. So we can get tens of thousands of those bats um, in this cave and they can also be going to Mount Etna. So Mount Etna Caves is the largest maternity cave for them in Australia. Um, and I believe it's over 100,000 that we have in there. Um, within the ecosystem of the cave system, as well as the surrounding environment,
Lydia Georgeson is also mapping these caves in 3D. The map can then be used for so many different things. Uh, with it, within the cave, you have all the infrastructure. Obviously, um, we're a tourist attraction, so we want to make sure our infrastructure is up to date. Um, so we're um, using that map to update that, as well as scientific research. So we could end up having research done on the bats, their populations. We could have research done on the microclimate of the cave and the airflow and maybe how that impacts the bats. So this map can then be used for those scientific research um, projects as well. Lydia is concerned at the plummeting number of ghost bats. Yeah, so the ghost bat population we know has been declining for quite some time now. Um, it's something that we try to keep an eye on. Whenever we see a ghost bat in the caves, we get very excited. Everybody knows about it, but we honestly don't see them in our cave system too often. Uh, so our bats here, the micro bats, most of the ones that you can see flying around are the little bentwing bats and their echolocation is pretty perfect. Um, definitely not 100%, I'd say like 99.9% .9 accurate. Um, they can go through and they're emitting their echolocation, they're timing how long it is from um, all the objects around them and they're able to move through the cave actually quite smoothly. Um, sometimes they just get a little bit muddled up or there might be a few bats around or they might take a corner too fast and um, yeah, then they might run into you just a little bit. But they're only tiny so they'll just bounce off and fly away. It's nothing too bad. <laughs> Back in Yapoon, the volunteers will continue to spend their afternoons feeding bats of all sizes as the race continues to save their habitats and improve the image of these important critters.